Hello, how are you doing? Justin here. Welcome to IM156, in which we're going to be checking out how to do picked finger style. Now what I mean by picked finger style is you're going to be using a plectrum to pick out individual notes in a kind of a strummy, almost finger style kind of way. And what it's really training you up to do is to be accurate with your pick and therefore be able to pick out individual notes, particularly while you're strumming. So, because it's a really cool thing to be able to kind of have a little... kind of thing. I'm, I'm, I'm strumming, it's still kind of strummy, but I'm able to pick notes out from my strumming. Now the best way to learn this is to start off with a couple of simple patterns that teach you to pick individual notes while maintaining your down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up pattern that you would normally use in a bar. So let's get to a close-up and have a look at a really, really common one of these patterns. We're going to be using a G chord. So get your left hand on a G, the close-up is going to be on your picking hand. We've got our left hand on a G chord, and the little pattern that we're going to be doing here is going to be 6 string, 4, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 3. 6, 4, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 3. And it's really important that you re keep doing your alternate picking. So down, up, 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 down, up. Now this one pattern can teach you a whole lot of stuff and it's all because you're going to get your hand used to moving. You can see it's kind of almost, it looks strummy already. So if I start strumming and do kind of start picking out some notes, You can see now it's sort of strummy, but now I'm picking out notes. But the big deal here is to learn to be accurate first. And this pattern is a really good one to learn on. So six string, four, three, four, two, three, four, three. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now all that would change when you move chords is the bass note. You'd leave all of the rest. So if we moved, say, to a C chord, so left hand is now moving to a C, the bass note is now going to be on the fifth string. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. You could maybe move that to a G sus with a B in the bass. To an A minor seven. It's a really common pattern. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. We get G. Now, if we go to a D chord, we don't really want to be on those strings because the first note we have to play is the D string, which is the fourth string. So it's okay sometimes to move this pattern to here, to the thinnest four strings. Then when you move to a C chord, you've moved to that middle group of four strings and then back to the top four. G to D. Maybe you go to an A minor. Because we got A bass note, which should be the fifth string. To an F maybe, G. So the big deal here is learning to get this motion so it's still always down and up. If you get confident with that, have a go at kind of strumming a little bit more. So just get yourself on the G. This is always going to be on beat one. So one and two. Now I'm doing A 
bass, four, three, four, bass, two, three, four. Doesn't matter, it's all just about trying to free up and getting used to being able to play individual notes while you keep that hand moving all the time. You can feel free to make up your own patterns here. So long as this is going to be on beat one, you can do what you like. You could go and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So this is doing now five, two, four, three. By far the best way for you to get this technique into your playing is to apply it to some songs that you already know. It's a really great idea to try and make up some of your own patterns and just really make sure that you stick up to this down and up picking slash strumming motion. That's really the key. Now some people have trouble judging the distances between the strings so I'm just going to show you a little exercise that you might like to do a few times if you're struggling with finding the distances between the strings with your picking hand. So the exercise that I'd recommend is leaving your left hand to cover all of the strings so they're all muted and dead. Then you're going to pick up on the thinner string, down on the second string, up on the thinner string again, then down on the third, up on the thinner string, down on the fourth, up on the thinner string, down on the fifth, up on the thinnest, down on the sixth, and then back up again. Fifth, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now very often I find that if I use my little finger as an anchor point there, it makes the kind of accuracy a little bit better. So you might want to try that one. Some people don't like using an anchor. I, I, I think it sounds pretty cool. It works for me. Now if it, once you've done that a few times, you might like to try it starting from the other end. So you're going here down on the six, up on the five, down on six, up on four, down on six, up on three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Normally again I would play this with little finger as an anchor. I'm sure you'll find doing that string skipping exercise will help you out if you're really struggling doing your picked finger style. That said, there's no substitute for really slow practice, so probably the best thing that you can do is to do your picked finger style patterns that you make up yourself, all the ones that I've shown you, and if you're struggling, just do them really, really slowly. Don't be afraid of watching your pick hand like a hawk, just stare at it, you know, if, if, if you can't do it. Just, and, and it's really a speed thing. If you do it really slowly, you should be able to do it. Remember to use your little finger pinky as an anchor if you want to. I, you know, I like to do that. Some people really hate it, so I'm going to leave that down to your call. I think it's a good idea, and it makes kind of logical sense to me that it kind of works, it functions as a gauge and helps you judge the distance between the different strings. But like I said, some people find that a really bad idea, so I'm going to leave that up to you to find out which one feels good for you. Um, Again, most importantly, can't stress it enough, make sure you apply this idea to some songs that you know and that you like, and it'll make you a better guitar player, it'll incorporate it into your playing so it comes out sounding natural. Hope you've enjoyed learning that, and I'll see you for another lesson very soon. Take care, bye-bye.